All right, thank you for joining me. My name is Josh King. And what we're talking about today is a crash course in social media. Uh, I'm a course with Tinderbox Marketing, if you didn't already know that. And why I wanted to put this workshop together is that a lot of businesses in this environment with COVID-19 are uh, being forced into a situation that they haven't been in before, where they are um, put in that situation of having to transition uh, what might be a traditional business or even a business that hasn't paid that much attention to the digital space and going to the digital space. I can think of a few examples. I know of a beer tasting room over in Indian Trail here in Spokane that uh, thrives on people coming to their physical location, but in this environment has had to transition to doing curbside pickup. And that transition can sometimes be tricky for businesses. And a lot of times that means that they have to also incorporate social media into what they're doing. And that's why I wanna do this is to help you in a crash course style, figure out how to use social media, especially in this current environment. So some tips for today, like I said, um, I think you can ask questions. Uh, hopefully if you're on Zoom, you can use the Zoom chat or the Zoom Q&A, but I also uh, encourage you to work along. So I'm going to walk you through how to actually build a social media strategy for your business. And you should be taking notes, working along and uh, developing your strategy as we go. Asking questions, always a top tip. The next one is to start now. A lot of folks sit in workshops that I do with uh, well intentioned with the goal of um, starting a social media strategy or using Facebook or they're going to figure out Instagram and then they never take that next step. Well intentions, but they die, right? Those intentions die. So thinking about starting now is key. You're going to be writing down a strategy and working out some plans and maybe coming up with some ideas. The second this thing is over, start doing it, start executing. The next thing is to think about your goals. It's important to know what you're hoping to accomplish with social media so that you can work backward from there. What are the goals you wanna accomplish? Do you wanna reach uh, a like milestone on Facebook? Do you wanna create more engagement? Do you wanna drive traffic to your website? Whatever the case may be, that should be your goal, right? So thinking about your goals helps you work backwards with what you wanna accomplish. And then seriously, ask questions. So again, if you're on the Zoom webinar, um, you can use the chat function or the Q&A, and then I'll try to check Facebook as we go. Some things I hope you take away from today is what a light version of a marketing plan will look like. It's the key to social media. Having a good marketing plan, or at least a sketch of a marketing plan, will help you figure out how to incorporate social media into your marketing strategies. The next thing is, uh, will cover, should your business be using social media? The answer is yes, I think you should be. The next one is, how do you determine what platform makes the most sense for your business? Is it Facebook, is it Instagram? And there are some easy ways to figure that out. And then I will also cover some resources for you to learn more, those will come up along the way. This quote from Matt, Goulart says, social media is about the people, not about your business. Provide for the people and the people will provide for you. And what Matt's driving at here is the idea that what you decide to post on social media about your business or uh, on behalf of your business should be adding value to your consumer or to your customer. It's not about what you want, it's about what the customer wants. So I think about that beer tasting room that I mentioned earlier, what do their customers want from them? Well, I think their customers would want to know what they have on tap and what they have in the fridge. I think that's easy, low-hanging fruit. But I also think what would be good would be maybe for that place to start talking about what beer they enjoy in general and what styles of beer. Um, I know that this place also collaborates with local breweries to, to make their own uh, beer. And talking about that, doing a video maybe with a beer in hand and then talking about why they chose the ingredients they chose and why they decided to partner with that brewery would make sense for content. And then also maybe talking about what, um, what breweries they enjoy and what beers they enjoy, not just in the local market, but in general. And what the difference between good craft beer and domestic beer is or mass produced beer anything to add value. The thing you learn about craft beer nerds is that they love craft beer and they love breweries. And so even doing a scavenger hunt or um, craft beer bingo would be something. And that's all about adding value to the consumer, not 
adding value for the business. So we're here on social media to take care of our customer. Uh, when it comes to social media, it can be completely overwhelming. I was getting ready for this workshop and doing some new research to try to get my head around some things that may have changed in the social media landscape. And one of the things that I came up with was um, I was looking at Wikipedia, and this is in the, the deck that I'll make available. If you want the deck uh, of the workshop we're talking about today, my goal is to try to get it into the Q&A, maybe upload it as a file, but I'll definitely make it available by email and, and the resources. So email me at any time, josh at tinderbox.marketing, and I'll shoot you over the resources for this. Uh, but I was looking at Wikipedia and look, Wikipedia publishes a list of the major social networking sites. And uh, they have a list of 183. And at least 13 of those have 100 million users. When you start talking about active users in millions, Facebook has 2,414 million. So that's 2.4 billion users. YouTube has 2 billion. WhatsApp has 1.6. They have so many users and social media tends to be really overwhelming. And so I like to take a practical approach. And so what I want to do is start out by thinking about social media in practical terms. So thinking about social media, we can think about what are some of the things that we need to know? The first thing you need to know is anymore, 84% of people with access to the internet use social media. So if you have access to the internet, whether it's on your phone or your computer, whether it's Wi-Fi or cell data, you can access the internet. And the majority of people who access the internet use social media. That's good for us as a business. It means that a lot of people are reachable with the social media platforms that we choose to use. 73% of US adults use YouTube which we tend not to think of YouTube always as social, but it can be. 69% of US adults use Facebook. Uh, these stats, by the way, are all sourced in the deck. So if you wanna know where I'm getting this information from, they are uh, all sourced in there. One of my favorite all-time resources though for social media research is pewresearch.org. Uh, great content there on social media usage. 37% of adults use Instagram. So thinking about this, uh, the reason why I put these three there is we all know YouTube, we all understand YouTube and its power and its reach. And most people know Facebook. And then you start hearing about these other social media sites, like, oh, you gotta be on Instagram or you gotta be on Snapchat. So I wanna just show that Instagram has half the US users that Facebook has. So it's important to know that while that is, you know, Instagram seems like, oh, it doesn't reach as many people, if you start digging into the data, and you should, you'll find that maybe the people you're trying to reach overwhelmingly use Instagram, but the broad scope, you know, the, the, the bigger picture of US adults don't. So you just, you gotta, you gotta do your research and, and figure these things out. Um, the majority of Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram users visit those sites daily. So when I'm doing workshops in the real world at live, one of the questions I always ask is if, People are using Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat sites like that daily. How often should we post on social media? Daily, right? And so I will uh, not freak you out and say that you have to post seven days a week, but I definitely think, especially if you're using Facebook, you should be considering a strategy of three to five posts per week, Monday through Friday. All right, Instagram and Snapchat remain especially popular among those aged 18 to 24. So when I talked about as you narrow into your customer information and you really start figuring out who your customer is, you're going to see that if you're reaching 18 to 24 year olds, the right channel for you might be Instagram and it might not be Facebook. So you have to know who your customer is and be able to make decisions based on your customer and where they spend their time. Facebook globally has 2.27 billion monthly active users. So they have more users than that, but not everyone is a monthly user, but the monthly active users is 2.27 billion. 90% of social media users try to reach out to brands. What does try mean? It means that they wanted to send you a Facebook message. They wanted to reach out to you in an Instagram DM, but you didn't respond. That's what they mean by try. Don't be a business that somebody tried to reach. That's one of my first tips. Try to be the business that they can reach, right? Whether it's having your Facebook autoresponder on or just checking your DMs on a regular basis, be the business that is reachable. 53% of consumers expect brands to be transparent 
about product and service changes and company values on social media. I had a client that sells a food product and they have 16 different flavors and one of the products they ran out of and they were extremely transparent about that. In fact, they wrote a blog post talking about why they ran out of that product and then there ended up being some ingredient changes so they had to source some new ingredients and they wrote a blog post and they talked about it and they gave their customers a heads up because it was one of, their fav uh, one of the most popular products, uh, it was a fan favorite. So they were really intentional to talk about that. Anytime you're facing something like that, and it doesn't always have to be a challenge, it could just be a change or something new, but people are expecting you to talk about that on social media. 67% of consumers consider video to be the most transparent type of social media post. So using video, and it can be on your phone, it doesn't have to be fancy, doing a Facebook Live, on your phone and just talking about maybe even how your business is faring in light of COVID-19 and stay at home orders. But being, uh, using video as a way to be transparent is something that consumers are responding to in a positive way. So thinking about social media, you just need to know a lot of people are using it. And depending on what kind of person you're trying to reach, the right answer for which social media site you should be using could change. 90% of users in 2019 access social media on a mobile device. So one of the other questions I answer, so 99% of users, 99% of people who use social media use it on their mobile phone. So if you have a website for your business, the first question you should be asking yourself is, is your website mobile friendly, right? Is your website mobile friendly? So we have to consider not only what social media sites are popular, and how many people are using them. We need to consider what pockets of what groups of people are using social media sites. And then we need to consider how they're using those social media sites. Are they using them daily? Are they accessing them on mobile devices? How are they using social media? So Wikipedia, I mentioned this already. Um, Wikipedia is a great place to go for research on social media, but it's also a place to get a practical definition of social media because sometimes we think about social media and social networking as these these sort of ambiguous things, but they are real things with a real definition. And Wikipedia, and I just got this today, so this is today's definition, is a social networking service, also social networking site or social media, is an online platform which people use to build social networks or social relationship with other people who share similar personal career interests, activities, backgrounds, or real life connections. Let me say that one more time. A social networking service is an online platform which people use to build social networks or social relationship with other people who share similar personal or career interests, activities, backgrounds, or real life connections. So things that we do in the real world can also take place on social media. And if you've been paying attention at all, during stay at home orders, you know that people are looking to social media more than ever as a place to build personal connections. As much as there might be politics and religion and all that other stuff that tend to make the social media experience not so great, we know that social media is a place that is enhancing relationships right now. And it's an opportunity for your business to be a part of that, to be a reminder to people about um, what's positive in the world and what's going on. All right. How does social media fit into the larger strategy of your organization? You have to think about this. And the reason is, is that a lot of people that I've run into over the years have a tendency to think of social media as something that they can put on an island. Social media is not a part of our marketing strategy. It's not a part of our sales strategy. It's not a part of our customer service strategy. It's its own thing and it lives over here and we're gonna put it on an island and give it all kinds of unrealistic expectations. And that's not how you should be treating social media. How should you be treating social media? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to get agreement on terms so that we're talking the same language for the rest of the workshop. When it comes to your business, there are three pieces that are moving together at all times. It's your advertising, marketing, and sales. And this quote from Daryl Turner says, advertising builds awareness, marketing gets clients to know you, and sales gets clients to use you. What that means is that marketing is the thing that you use to tell a story. And marketing can be everything from a website to social media, to a business card, to a brochure, to signage on your building. It's all the things that you use to raise awareness about your business in terms of storytelling, right? And a lot of those things are free. Social media doesn't have any cost in it. Facebook for business with an account, just setting up an account is free. 
it only becomes advertising when we pay to reach people. So your website might have, a, might have had a cost for it, but it's not advertising until you're running Google AdWords to drive traffic to your website. And I hope that that makes sense. My kids have a great understanding of ads because they watch YouTube and YouTube videos typically are preceded by ads and are interrupted with ads and end with ads. That's an advertisement. An advertisement is when you pay to reach the right customer. Now sales is the transaction. And any more with stay at home orders and people shopping online more than ever probably, sales is that interaction where dollars change hand. So it's whether it's my uh, friend's business out in Five Mile when they are uh, doing a curbside pickup or when it was the physical location was open and people were coming in and paying for a beer and drinking it on site. Whatever it is, it's that transaction. In my industry, it tends to be face to face or any more zoom to zoom, right? Computer screen to computer screen. But sales is a transaction. So marketing is a storytelling, advertising is paying to reach more people, and then sales is when both of those things work and dollars change hand. When it comes to that light version of a marketing plan that I mentioned at the beginning, and one of the things that I was planning to cover today, this is what I'm talking about. And why it's called the Marketing Hub model is because every business has a place where people need to go, a hub, a physical location, a website, an email address, whatever it is, there's a place that people need to go in order to do business with you. Right now, it tends to be a lot of web, right? So websites or social media, wherever people can buy from you, Instacart is a big one, Uber Eats, things like that. But our goal with marketing then is to look at all the spokes, all the things that surround our hub that we can use to drive traffic to our website. And you'll see I put social media on, on an island, uh, not really, but I put social media there because you could have Facebook, Instagram, Google My Business, Twitter, LinkedIn, you could have more. And LinkedIn, by the way, you'll have your personal page, right? Your, your uh, LinkedIn page and then your company page. And you can think the same thing with Facebook if you wanted to, but those are all social media things. And then you have all the other things that you do. You build strategic relationships, you do networking, public relations, that's sending press releases. You do public speaking and you have a website. Here are two examples where you can use things that you're doing in your business already to try to drive traffic using social media. So if you're doing public speaking, so like this, this is considered public speaking, this workshop, this is me speaking publicly, inviting people to join, whether it's my Zoom link or on my Facebook page, I then shared that out. I shared that in my monthly newsletter and I did it twice. So I invited you to join using my newsletter. And then following this, I will send out the newsletter with the video uploaded to YouTube. So this is recording and then I'll make it available on YouTube. So social media plays a, a role in this in multiple ways. It's how I announced it. It's how I'm sharing it. And it's how I'll follow up and make it available afterward right? I didn't just do public speaking in a little bubble and just send it out in my newsletter or promote it on my website. I'm using all the tools I have available to me to make it available. And the same thing goes for your blog. If you're writing a blog on your website on a regular basis, then that blog should be shared in your monthly newsletter or weekly newsletter. It should be shared on social media and, and driving traffic back to your hub. Our goal with social media is to send people where they need to go to buy. And the way we're gonna do that is not by promoting sales messages. The way that we're gonna do that is by sharing content that adds value to our customers' lives. This workshop is free. It didn't cost you anything but time to show up. That is something I'm doing to add value. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm trying to give you something, right? And we have to think about that as we post on social media and as we work social media into the bigger picture of our marketing strategy. So when I think about marketing, advertising and, and sales, I think of them as gears, gears that run our business. And when they're spinning in the right direction, we get sales, right? When, or I mean results, when they're all spinning, because the way that that works is if your marketing is awesome and your advertising is great because you have a good budget, but your sales team stinks, it doesn't matter how good the other two are, that third one doesn't drive results because the sales process is broken. 
So as you think about social media, you have to think about what does your sales look like? If you've transitioned your sales into the online environment to handle the stay at home orders and COVID-19, then you need to make sure that your sales process through the website works well. Is it easy to get to? Is it mobile friendly? Um, is it easy to, to look at your catalog of products? Uh, we go to North Division Bike um, a lot. We take our bikes there every year to get tune-ups. I'm in the market for buying a, a mountain bike, but that may have changed considering uh, stay-at-home orders and COVID-19 and how that's impacted business and whatnot. But that is where I, I do a lot of my bicycle shopping. I just was on their website the other day. A uh, buddy of mine was asking about bike shorts, padded bike shorts. And so I wanted to show him the pair that I got. And their website right on the banner says, we have added all of our inventory to our website. Why did they do that? They did that because they recognize that if their marketing and advertising is doing its job, then they're going to be sending more people to their website than ever before because people aren't going to go to the physical location. They're going to go to the website. And they wanted to make sure that experience was top notch. So they enhanced that sales experience by adding their entire inventory of, of product, right? A really sound move. I had somebody else reach out to me. I've had two people reach out to me in the last two weeks saying, what do we need to do to get our website up and running or up to snuff or fix it up or looking awesome? Because they're recognizing that their websites aren't doing what they need to do in this environment. And it stinks that it took something like this to get people to understand that because your website was important before COVID-19. You're just realizing it now. All right. This leads me to the main point of this workshop. Yes, it took me 21 minutes to get to the main point, but the main point is that the hardest thing about social media that I have seen has nothing to do with the logistics of using it. We're not gonna talk about how to do a Facebook Live today. We're not gonna talk about how to get Zoom to go to Facebook. We're not gonna, all of that is learnable. And it's not the hardest part about social media. It's not what gets people tripped up. It's strategy. This is where people, have missteps all the time. I know people who are excellent at running Instagram. They have filters and presets and they schedule and they do live and they do stories and they do regular posts and their grid looks wonderful, but it's not driving business because it doesn't fit in the strategy. You have to have a solid strategy if you're going to try to drive results. I know I've been talking almost nonstop, but I want to remind you, you can use the Zoom webinar information uh, chat tool and the Q&A to ask questions. I encourage you to ask questions. If you want to feel free to jump in. Uh, I am going to quickly stop sharing right now uh, my screen to double check um, Facebook live to see if I have missed any questions. So use this opportunity to ask questions. If you have them, I'm happy to take them. I don't see any questions so far on Facebook, but I just want to make sure uh, somebody said, Hey, and somebody said, thank you for doing this. So I've gotten the comments, but yeah. Oh, and my wife is jumping in. She's a wonderful panelist. She's letting me know. Thank you so much. Okay. So we'll go back to screen share and we'll get back after it. All right. Strategy. Hardest part. So how do we do it? It's not as hard as you think. The first thing you have to start with is who? Who are you trying to reach? Who's your customer? And you can't say everybody, that's the wrong answer. That answer doesn't count, right? Oh, sorry, I don't think I actually completed sharing. So here we go, share. Boom, there we go, okay. Who are you trying to reach? A lot of people get into this uh, mistake of trying to reach everyone and that, that doesn't work. You can't sell to every person. It's just not a reality. So what you have to think about is the next person to walk through the proverbial door. We know they're not walking through actual doors, uh, the digital door. What are the, what's, their, what's the average person gonna be? The next person, most likely what age are they gonna be? Most likely what gender are they gonna be? Most likely what marital status? What location, income, children, hobbies, interests? You have to think through the most likely person. And I'm gonna give you an example. A buddy of mine uh, sells, a cleaning, or sells cleaning tablets on, uh, online, on Amazon, on their website. And these cleaning tablets are designed for high-end espresso machines. And they just got into doing Keurigs and they just got into doing your standard coffee pot. But they designed these tabs because when you have a high-end espresso machine in your house, that espresso machine and its little digital readout is going to remind you every month or every so often 
to clean it. And he went to the store and saw that a pack of them at Fred Meyer, like six was like 30 bucks, outrageously expensive. So he figured out how to source them and he started selling them on Amazon on his own website. Here's the kicker. I can't buy them because I don't have a high-end espresso machine. Now I can now because he offers them for the average coffee pot. But at the time when he first started, when we first met, they were just doing high-end espresso machine tablets, right? That doesn't work for me. So even if I fit all of the other parameters of the people most likely to buy from him, the one thing that he has to keep in mind is that has to have a high-end espresso machine. So even if I fit the age, the gender, the marital status, the income, the children in the home, the hobbies, the interests, the geographic, like located near or in a city, even if I fit all those, the one thing that he has to have is I have to have an espresso machine. So you have to think about that too. You have to think all the way through and then willing to buy from you, right? And a lot of businesses miss this. They get the customer profile, but then they don't stop to think, does this customer actually want to buy from me, have the ability or desire to buy from me? So even if I fit that demographic, what the one thing I don't fit is that I don't have a high-end espresso machine. So don't be afraid to be narrow here. You can narrow down your customer base. It's okay because you're going to do better in the long run by having a more targeted audience. So the first piece of any social media strategy and the first piece of any marketing plan is to think about the person you're trying to reach. <laughs> Here's a great, uh, great, great question. How on earth do you come up with something unique content three times a week? Oh, I will answer that question. I promise. I have a lot of tips and tricks for that. Great question. All right. The next thing you have to think about is why. Why are you using social media? This is the goals piece. What are the things that you're trying to accomplish? Now, I don't mind it if you want to set goals around the, the things that are measurable. And I'll talk to you about that here at the end too. But things like, I want to get to this many people uh, on Facebook that have liked my business. Now, what I do is I take a look at all the social media sites that my business has, and I look at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I add them all into one bucket, and I call it a uh, social audience, total social audience. So one goal that a lot of people look at is, what's the total social audience? And then their goal is, I want to, I want to, I want to get to the next milestone. I want to increase that, Right. So a lot of people that I work with, their number one goal is just to reach more people. So their strategy is different. When it comes to content, what they're trying to do, Amy, is they're trying to post content that reaches new people. And the way that they do that is creating shareable content. So content that people want to share, whether it's a funny video or it's a coupon or a deal, something that encourages a share. Uh, other goals around that could around uh, trackable, measurable data is uh, the number of people you reach per week. That can be impressions or a week or the number of engagements that you get per week or per month. And that can be the number of clicks. So did people click like, did they click comment, did they click share, did they click on your link? Those are all measurable things. Another thing that you can do is just to create uh, engagement. So I worked with public television in Spokane for a number of years. It's KSPS, PBS. And uh, one of the goals that they wanted to do was they wanted to use social media as a way to engage with their viewing audience when they weren't watching TV. So they knew that they were doing everything that they could to drive traffic to their, to their actual, their hub is watching TV, right? And during this time, they had, uh, they had Downton Abbey was right in the, in the thick of that show. So they knew they were getting a lot of eyeballs. And what they wanted to do was to create a social media strategy that encouraged people engaging with them offline. So they were creating content that engaged the whole person. So they stopped sharing posts about what is on tonight and what the TV schedule is. And they started sharing content around, if you like down Abbey, maybe you're this kind of person and maybe you'd be interested to know this. So like facts and figures and, and um, FAQs and historical information. They started posting content about building up the communities that they serve and uh, sharing events and talking about how they're engaged in the community. They started, uh, they've always created local documentaries that support the communities that they're in. So they started sharing those more and making those available. So that is how they chose their goal was based around engagement. So thinking about your goals is like who we want to reach and then your goals is important. And then the next thing that we have to do from there is think about what social media sites we'll use. We now have our goals. We now have the audience we're trying to reach. And that audience is going to dictate where we spend our time. So 
I have a tip here. Here's your, here's a thought on that part of the strategy. The first thing is to explore. Now I mentioned pewresearch.org. That's a great tool. And in this deck, if you want it, so email me josh at tinderbox.marketing and I'll send you the resources in the deck is some links to some places where you can do the research. If you have done the, the part, your part to figure out your audience, then figuring out people like that and what sites they're most likely to use isn't that hard. That's the explore part. Figure out where they are, right? PewResearch.org is a great resource for that. Once you figure out whether they're spending their time, where they're spending their time, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, or whatever, the next thing you can do is start interacting. And what I mean by that is you have to figure out how they use it. One of the things that happens is if you're supposed to be using Instagram, if that's where your audience is and that's the social media site you're going to choose, then you need to understand that the average number of hashtags per Instagram post is 11. And if you're like, I don't even know what the heck a hashtag is, then you have some work to do because that's how people are using that site. Twitter, for example, only allows 280 characters per tweet. And if your first question was, I don't know what a tweet is, then you have some homework to do. If you're like, I can't figure out how to communicate my message in 280 characters, then you need to know how to start a Twitter thread. Right? These are, these are all learnable, Googleable things. You can Google that, right? But if you don't take the time to learn how your audience is using the language, you're not gonna come across as authentic. It's, you're gonna be an imposter. So we're gonna spend some time figuring out where our audience is, and then we're gonna spend some time figuring out how they're using the social media site. And then once that's done, now we have permission to engage, to create relevant content, relevant to them, not relevant to us, right? So it's a process. And that leads me to a quote from David Alston. Social media is not a media. The key is to listen, engage, and build relationships. It's not just a megaphone where you get to just say whatever it is you want to say to the people that are following you. It's a place where you get to listen to your audience through customer service feedback and comments and, and reviews. It's a place where you get to engage sites like uh, Instagram and Twitter allow you to follow easily your customers and they can follow you. So it creates relationship. It's a place where you can build authentic relationships, right? Some of the businesses that I see that are thriving during this stay at home stuff are the businesses that are embracing the community aspect that are looking at what their role is in the community mm -hmm. and how they can continue to support the community. I know a co-op that quickly figured out how to, they were not on Instacart. They didn't do any kind of online ordering, but within a few weeks figured out how to do their own curbside and managed to launch it. And they launched small. So they launched by just offering curbside to their at risk shoppers. And after they figured out the process, then they opened it up to more people, right? That's a relationship building thing. That's not just about selling. That's about saying, Hey, we know you enjoy shopping here. And we want to make that an experience that you can continue to have, even though there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. It's about listening and engaging and building relationships. So now that we know the who, the why, the what, now we have to know where. And where is, what are you doing next? What's next for you? You know you're going to start with Facebook or you know you're going to start with Instagram. The next thing you're going to do is figure out where you're going next. And I want you to create a timeline. And the reason why I want you to create a timeline, and I'm working with a client right now that's doing this. She has LinkedIn for her business. She has LinkedIn for herself. She's got her Google My Business. That's the first one there. She's got that set up and she's figuring out how to post to all of those on a regular basis with good content. She knows that Twitter is next for her, but she's not ready. So she's going to wait until she's good at those other ones before she adds another one into the mix. And that's my recommendation all the time. I would rather you be really good at one social media site than bad at 10 of them. And unfortunately, nonprofits fall victim to this all the time because nonprofits look at social media as like this free thing. And so they sign up for all of them and then they end up being bad at all of them. I would rather you be intentional and map out a timeline so that you can get comfortable and work your way. So the timeline is there's, there should be dates associated with this. It could be three months. It could be March or, uh, 2021. It can be whatever. Just be intentional and think your way through. And then you have to think about when you're going to post. So Amy asked that question, how on earth do you come up with something unique? How do you come up with content? Now here's, I'm going to share with you two things that are going to help make this easy. 
the first one is what's your roadmap? So this is a, a, a content spreadsheet that there's a link in the deck. If you want the link, you got to get the deck. So email me, Josh at tinderbox.marketing and I'll send you all this stuff. This is a spreadsheet and I didn't come up with it. I'm pretty sure I found something like this online. And all this is meant to be, and you can see at the bottom, I have two sheets and this is called template. This is a week in week out template. And what this allows you to do is to map out some ideas of what you want to post for the upcoming week. So I'm always thinking a week ahead. I have clients that do the same thing every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So on Mondays, they do a, a staff shout out, like a uh, meet the team. So every Monday they have 40 people in their office, so they can do that for 40 weeks before they have to revisit. I mean, they get all the way through a year and then they can revisit. So they do a meet the team every Monday. And what they do is they do a picture, uh, like a headshot, of a formal headshot. And then they have that team member submit what we call an at the, in the wild picture. So the team member gets to send a picture of them with their family or out on a hike or snowboarding or whatever. So Mondays for them is always meet the team. Tuesday is, oh, sorry, it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday is their schedule. Wednesday is what they call Worksite Wednesday, and they're an architecture firm. So Wednesday is when they share a project picture. So this is a current project that they're currently working on, and here's an update from that Worksite. Great idea. And then Thursday, they do Throwback Thursday, and you can do Throwback Thursday or Flashback Friday, whatever you want. And they do Throwback Thursday, and what they do is they reach back into the history books and they pull out one of their past projects and they share pictures from a project within their 30-year history. And that's what they do every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. And at first, I was super skeptical. I was like, there's no way that this is going to work week in, week out. There's no way. that." Be but they continue to get engagement and response every week to that. It's what they have found their audience wants. They want to see the work they've done. They want to see the work they're doing and they want to meet the people behind the scenes. So now if I said that you need to post three to five times a week, three of them are already done. All you have to do is think of one or two more things and you're golden. So you'll notice also at the bottom of this, I have a list for hashtags and I work those out into buckets. So you should have your brand tags. So mine are hashtag tinderbox marketing because that's the name of my business now. Hashtag Tinderbox Consulting, because that was the original name of my business. And then I do hashtag Tinderbox and hashtag Tinderbox Spokane. So those are what I call brand tags. Those are specific to my business and I map those out. Then what you do is you add your location. So if you're a business that's local, you want to find all the local hashtags, hashtag Spokane or hashtag Coeur d'Alene or hashtag Sandpoint. Then category, what business in, are you in? What line of business? So I'm in marketing. So I'm going to have hashtag marketing, hashtag social media, and then I'm going to have hashtag business, hashtag small business, hashtag entrepreneur, hashtag entrepreneurship. See, I'm building my buckets. Then you can have industry tags, which is the same, you know, marketing, uh, social media, and then miscellaneous tags. What are some other ones that you want to add in there? So now it's not so hard to meet my 11 criteria hashtags on Instagram. The other thing that I'm going to do is on the bottom, I'm going to map out some things that happen every week or um, every month. As a reminder, because a lot of it, I find this all the time. Um, I was working with a school uh, uh, out in the valley, a high school. It's an alternative high school. And they had a school store. And they had only mentioned it like once on social media ever. Well, that's something that they can mention every month, right? Because just, and, and the reason is just because you know about it and you see it every day doesn't mean your customers know about it or see that post every day. That's the other tip here, and I wish that was in my notes because, and I really hope you hear me here, you are going to be the only one that sees everything you post. Your audience isn't going to see everything. It's the nature of the beast. You're going to be the only one that sees every post. You're going to feel like you're retreading the same tires, and that's okay. Push through, right? Think about a pastor at a church. They have to teach about... Easter every year, and they have to teach about the birth of Jesus every year. How do you do that if you've been a pastor for 25 years? You know what? Not everybody goes to your Easter service. So just thinking through that and being okay with the fact that you're going to be the only one to see your content every time is going to help you feel a lot better about doing some of the same things in, you know, over and over again. The post ideas can go even deeper. And to answer that question from Amy earlier, one of the things that I've done for another client who's a food client, you know, in the food industry, as I found a list of all the food days, weeks, and months of the year. 
So did you know May is National Salad Month? Right. So I found a list and I put a link to that list in the bottom of the newsletter or in the bottom of this spreadsheet. And so every time I get um, a, a, a dead spot in the calendar, I can open that up and I can go, oh, is today donut day or something? Right. That's what I do. So don't be afraid to process this out as a way to not have to do so much heavy lifting and heavy thinking all the time. The next part of this spreadsheet that I have is what I call the year at a glance. So the year at a glance is me taking a look at my business and all the things that happen month in, month out every year. Do you always do a fall special? Do you always do a spring cleaning tips and tricks, right? My hashtags live here too. And then my post ideas live here too. The other thing you'll notice is I can also use this spreadsheet to map out my newsletters. And this is based on a template for setting two newsletters a month. And so what you can do here is you can map out every newsletter, two newsletters a month. Well, guess what? If you send your newsletter two times a month, that's two other social media posts that you get to add in. Our newsletter is out. Have you seen our latest newsletter? Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter, right? You can map out your whole, anything that you can do to add a process is going to make the overall strategy more cohesive and it's going to help you reach your audience better. All right. Sorry about getting on that soapbox, but I really believe that process is the way to help make your life easier. Again, this spreadsheet is available. If you shoot me an email, I'll send you everything. Actually, tell you what, I'm gonna do you one better. Here comes the link to the spreadsheet in the chat box. Boom, there it is. Okay. Now, Okay, show note, there we go. Moving on. Okay, some more st thoughts on strategy when it comes to posting and what to do. The first one is you have to be intentional. You have to be thoughtful about what you say. Social media is, has never been more politicized and more religious and more polarizing. You have to be thoughtful about what you say. The other thing is content is queen. And when it comes back to that question about how do I come up with three posts a week, I would rather that you only posted once a week if it was your best post than try to push out three posts, two of which weren't your best. Don't have to follow the rules, right? I'm trying to lay the groundwork and give you a template and a strategy that will drive success. But if you get to a week and you just don't have it in you, that's fine. I would rather your content be your best than to push out something that's fake or not authentic or not sincere. The next thing is you have to be consistent and that means a couple of things. So the first one is you got to set that schedule. So I have that client, they post every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then they jump in with a couple extra, but that's consistent. That's their schedule. They don't, they don't deviate from that too much. The next thing is they keep the same voice. You don't have permission to not ever drop F-bombs on your social media sites and then one day get ticked off about something and decide to drop an F-bomb. That's not cool, that's a rope -a dope You tricked me, right? Here I am, I've clicked like on your page, I'm following your page, your page is typically family friendly and then all of a sudden one day you decide to drop an F-bomb or one day you decide to go on a political or religious rant. That's not cool. It's okay if those are your beliefs and it's okay if that's what you stand for in your personal private life. But what happens with customers is they don't feel like you were being authentic or transparent and they feel like they were manipulated. Now, I'll give you the example of the reverse. My business, my core mission of Tinderbox marketing is to serve God by serving others. So guess what? I can get away with putting scripture and biblical stuff in some of my business content. It's on my website. Every once in a while, I throw a scripture up on a social media platform. But my business from day one was founded on that as a mission, as a principle. I'm not making anybody upset or fooling anybody when I do that because I've been consistent, right? So I hope that's clear and that makes sense. The next thing that after all that, so you've, you're, you're this far in your strategy, you've mapped out all these things, you're going along, 
the first thing that's going to happen is you're not going to stick to your schedule. You got to stick to it. You got to power through. I know people who love to work on that spreadsheet. They get together, they do it on a Sunday, they're business owner. They sit down with a bottle of wine. They tuck the kids away. They put them to bed early, whatever it is. They grab a glass of wine and they just sit on their computer. They throw on Netflix. They don't chill and they write out their content for the next week. That way when Monday rolls around, everything's dialed in. They don't have to think that hard. What, if it's Monday morning with your first cup of coffee, if it's every morning with your first cup of coffee, whatever it is, set your schedule and stick to it. It's the only way you're going to drive success. And it's the only way you're going to create a process is by maintaining that consistency. The last thing is what the sequel, and what I mean about this, and this is again, continuing to answer that one question. By the way, keep throwing those questions up. The next piece is what the heck are you going to post? And the good news for you is I have this list. This list is sourced in the deck. I'll make sure it's available to you. This comes from HubSpot and this is a list of content ideas. This is everything from how to's to frequently asked questions to doing a poll or a quiz or to sharing famous quotes, whatever the case is, right? Here's, I'm going to talk about FAQs for a minute because they're really important. If your business keeps getting asked the same questions, there's a couple things you need to figure out here. One, your process isn't clear. If P, and I'll, I'll tell you a story. So my wife and my daughter went to Boise before COVID-19 for a gymnastics competition. They flew down, they were staying with some friends, they rented a car and they were going to the, I guess what's the main arena in Boise. And they went to there, they, they got there early, thankfully, wasn't clear where to park, no signage. Wasn't clear what doors to go in, no signage. They, they circled the block, they couldn't figure it out. They didn't know where to go. That's a frequently asked question. Where do I go to park? Where do I go to go in? Where does, those are things that could be interesting. Now, getting on the gymnastics thing, every time you go to a gymnastics competition, even if your kiddo's participating, you have to pay an entrance fee to watch. Some of the competitions take cards. Some only take cash. None of them tell you this. So you show up and you don't know what you're gonna get, right? That's a frequently asked question. What a great opportunity to not only address that on your website clearly, but another opportunity for social media content. If you keep getting asked the same questions, answer them, answer them on social media. A uh, hoop fest a number of years ago was it was forecasting rain, which if you know anything about hoop fest, it doesn't rain all that often, and it's typically one of the hottest weekends of the year. They knew rain was coming, and they were already starting to get questions about what happens if it rains, what happens if the, if our if our tournament is rained out. Hoop fest, being proactive, went to Twitter and said, "We will use Twitter as our tool to live update you on what's happening if it starts to rain." And so they did everything they could to drive traffic to Twitter to let you know that that was the place where you could get updates on courts and what was going to happen and what the contingency plan was. This list is full of ideas on what you can come up with to post. And if you create a process around it, it's not so hard, right? Okay. Couple of bonus slides here because it's so important. If you're doing your job right, whether it's running your business or social media or marketing, you're going to get reviews. You're gonna get comments and you're gonna get reviews. And if you're doing your business well and you're good at what you do, most of them are gonna be positive. But you know what? There's always a stick in the mud. There's always going to be somebody who's going to take issue with you, right? Yelp has a video about their review algorithm and they basically give the example that if there's the foodie who goes out to eat all the time and knows good food and knows good restaurants and they write a review, that review has more weight than the guy who only goes out to eat once a year and is a curmudgeon, right? And they try to learn that. But our business doesn't operate on an algorithm. I don't have some fancy algorithm figuring things out. So it's pretty much a guarantee that I will come across a negative comment or review at some point. And I want you to have a plan for that. The plan is first step, and this comes from the Air Force, and this was ad adapted for Webster University. This is what we call a triage plan. The first thing to do is figure out is the comment or review positive or negative. And basically, if it's positive, all we're going to do is we're going to share it. We're going to brag about it. We're going to post it. We're going we're gonna to say thank you. We're going to respond to the person, and we're going to go on with life. If it's negative, there's a decision tree that you should go through to figure out 
what you do. Now, my take on this is that you should, your number one priority, and they even say you should definitely correct the facts. And I, 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 I kind of take issue with that, but this is a good place to start. But your number one response strategy should be to get the conversation offline. If somebody is harping at you with something negative, the first thing you say is, thank you for taking time to share with us. We're bummed to hear this was your experience. We're looking into it. In the meantime, here's an email or a phone number and the name of a person that you can get in touch with today to help make this situation better. You, you know what I've learned? Most people aren't gonna take you up on that. They just wanted to be negative but at least you're taking the opportunity to respond to that and you're showing everybody else that sees that negative review that you are a caring relationship building business owner. Here's the example. A few years ago, went to a uh, trade show in Las Vegas and at that trade show was with a group of people. I was with a client. That client was sharing a booth with one of their suppliers and they all decided they wanted to go to a British pub and they knew the one, it was called Crown and Anchor. So I was just curious. So I just pulled out my phone and I'm pulling up Yelp and I'm like, where are we going? And the first review that shows up is this negative review. And this negative review comes in like this. It says, came in at happy hour, ordered a fish and chips and was charged $13.95. I checked their website price and it was $10.95. Ordered a Guinness, it was $6. Basically, he goes on to argue that this pub is off the strip and their happy hour Guinness price was a dollar more than a place on the strip, which if you know anything about Vegas, the strip is the expensive place. And typically if you're off strip, it shouldn't be as expensive. So he basically says I was ripped off, right? So the owner gets in and says, John, I'm sorry, you were disappointed with your visit with us. We take our customer service very seriously. We never intend to take advantage of you with our prices. Great response. That follows checks, checks box one and two, right? Respond and say, uh, thank you for sharing and say, we're sorry to hear about it. Then he goes on to clarify our website lists, the fish and chips at $11.95, which admittedly is an old price. I don't even know why he's arguing this. It doesn't look good on him. And it doesn't change the fact that the website was still wrong from what the dude was charged. Then he goes on to say, to be honest, we are locked out of our website for the time being because our website webmaster went out of business. We aren't able to make any changes. I apologize for the confusion or frustration. I hope you'll consider giving us another shot. So for the most part, he handles this okay. I take issue with the arguing because, and correcting the facts because it doesn't change anything. And then this brings up another bonus point that isn't even in my notes, and that is do not be the business owner that doesn't know your passwords. I have worked with business owners that don't know what website their platform their website is built on. They don't know the login information. They have no idea how to access it, and they have no idea how to make content changes. Do not be that person the very first thing that I do with any business that I work with is I start a document that I keep private and locked and I track all the passwords that I ever get access to. And I don't, and I, and I keep it updated and I don't ever hold them hostage because I don't want somebody to be in this boat where they don't know how to access them. I've worked with businesses that don't know how they change their, how they access their email. They had a tech person set it up and if their laptop falls in a, in a puddle or catches on fire, they wouldn't even know how to access their emails for crying out loud. Don't be that person. So that's my bonus thing. But really when it comes down to it, don't be this guy. This is not how to respond. Do not argue. Get the conversation offline. Say, you're, say thank you for taking the time to share. Say you're looking into it and you hate to hear about it. And here's a phone number and email that you can use to get in touch. The next bonus thing that I have available for you, and this link is gonna go up in the chat as well, is a spreadsheet for tracking your data. Every social media site, your website, and your newsletter all have data that you can mine on a weekly, daily, monthly basis, and you should be. And if you're looking at this spreadsheet, then you'll see I track weekly. I get it. Every Monday I get in and I start tracking the data for my clients, and I'm looking at the previous Monday through Sunday. So I'm always looking and you're going to probably ask Josh, why are you tracking weekly? And that sounds like such a waste of time. Well, I'll tell you why one, you should never run your business when it comes to marketing on feelings. I should never hear a business say, I feel like social media isn't working for me. Prove it to me. Prove it's not working to me. Right. I want you to show me. 
I don't want you to say, I feel like it's not working. I had a client just do this not too long ago. They said, I feel like we're not getting enough likes. And I went back and I looked at the data and I was like, you've grown a hundred new people in your audience in a month. What is, what does a win look like here? That's the other thing is having a goal. You can figure out if your goal is realistic or not. So they just, one, they didn't really have a goal. And number two, they weren't really aware of the data. So track your data. So I track total social audience. That's the total number of likes and followers and everything. I track impressions, which is the total number of eyeballs on your content. And I track engagements. And I look at it every week because if you're only looking at it at, at once a month or once a year or once a never, how are you going to make changes to your strategy? How are you going to know what's working or not? I told you the story of the architecture firm and how they do the same three posts basically every week. And I was skeptical. I didn't think it would work, right? But it does. And I only know that because we track the data. You have to track the data, right? Oh, sorry. I just realized that all the two spreadsheets that I shared didn't go out to everybody. Here they go. Boom. And I'm sharing it again. So there they should be. Hopefully you're all getting that. Track your data. Super key. Last little tip. And this comes from a guy Kawasaki, who was one of the early people in Apple, and now he's in uh, charge of one of my favorite social or one of my favorite sites that's called Canva. And he says every social media post should have a beautiful graphic. If there are two identical stories, the one with the beautiful gra beautiful graphic will always win. Doesn't mean you have to hire a professional photographer or even a graphic designer. What it means is if you have the option to share a picture or a graphic versus not sharing a picture or a graphic, then you should use the opportunity to share a picture or a graphic. And even as I was showing a video, I have the stats to prove it. This is how you're going to engage with your audience and make sure that you're taking full advantage of social media. We live in an age where you have a high-end camera in your pocket. Take advantage of it, okay? The next thing is, now what do you do? Okay, so the first step is, this is kind of overwhelming and I get it but you have to get comfortable. I guarantee you didn't learn to drive in a single day and you're not gonna figure out your social media strategy and you're not gonna fine tune it and you're not gonna learn all the skills that you need to learn to be successful on social media in a day. So you have to take time and you have to spend time learning it and using it and getting comfortable with it. The next thing is focus on your story, focus on your strategy, focus on connecting with people and building relationships. That's the key. The next one is you got to start small. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Start small. Start with Facebook. Start with Twitter. Start with Instagram. Whichever one works for you. Start with Google My Business. Start with one and then grow, right? Start with one and then go from there. The next one is figure out your audience. I definitely think if you don't know who your customer is or who your most likely customer is, you got to sort that out. I have a client that goes six deep. They have six customer profiles because they do business with six different categories of businesses. And that's fine. But at least they know. And they have messaging that they can create for each one of those audiences. Determine what social media sites you have. Uh, I do a free marketing review for anybody that wants it. I uh, take a look at what you're doing to market your business. I give you real-time feedback on that and some actionable steps that you can take. And I do that as a part of my mission to serve others. And every time I do that, I find a social media platform that the business didn't know they had every time, whether it was set up by an employee or a volunteer or whatever, or even they did it and they just forgot. I find a social media site that they didn't know they have. So you got to sort that out. And then you have to figure out what sites do you need to develop to move forward. On that note, went kind of fast here. And uh, this is how you can connect with me. I am going to open it up again to questions. So if you have any questions, comments you want to add, please feel free to either use the Zoom webinar chat. Just make sure you hit all panelists or, and attendees, or you can just even um, send them directly to me. You can also use the Q&A function, which has been used so far. I will answer any questions. I'm happy to go live and maybe even walk through a couple things. Um, this, again, is not intended to be like a, how do you post a Facebook live using Zoom, but I can show a couple things if it comes up. Uh, really, I want to focus on your strategy. So if you have any questions about that, uh, if you want the copy of the deck and some of the resources that we shared today, uh, head to um, our, my website. You can email me, josh at tinderbox.marketing. And then before I stop sharing the deck, if you do want a free marketing review, head to my website. You've got nothing to lose. I'll take a look at what you're doing and give you some feedback and hopefully point you in the right direction. 
All right. So uh, on that note, if you want to jump out, you can. Otherwise, feel free to hang out and ask questions. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been a ton of fun. I've been doing workshops now uh, for the last, this is the fourth one I've done. So four workshops and I'm really enjoying doing it. The feedback has been great. I appreciate the time people have taken to join me. Um, so please feel free to stick around, ask questions. Um, and uh, I'll hang out. Uh, I scheduled technically till 3.30. So feel free to fire away with questions. I'll just wait patiently. Uh, somebody asked me a question, jumped in late. Are you going to have classes again at North Idaho College? Yes, we will be having uh, the, the uh, classes again. Um, uh, so the, those are run through the SBDC, which is located at the North Idaho College campus. And, and SBDC, being a federally funded organization, decided to uh, uh, temporarily halt all workshops. I had some scheduled to come up in April. Um, so we were actually supposed to be, I think, uh, two weeks into a three-week series. Uh, so we're looking to do those again. Not sure what the schedule will be, but we'll do it. Somebody jumped in and said, thank you from the Rosalia. Why oh, thank you. Oh, so glad to see Rosalia on. Oh, I love the Whitman County Library District. You are my favorite. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and to some of the other people who said, thank you. You're so welcome. I've really enjoyed doing this. It's been a blast. And I will continue to be doing Friday workshops, uh, just trying to figure out what is next. So uh, there's quite a few of you still on and watching. If you have any feedback, something you'd like me to talk about, I've done uh, marketing, advertising, and sales, how they're connected, how they're different. I've done marketing and sales metrics and how to track those things and why that's important. I've done a customer service one and I've done this one. Uh, so anything that you uh, want me to talk about, um, all those are available on my YouTube channel. If you want to go back and watch any of those, this one will be available on YouTube, hopefully sometime early next week. Lynette said, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. And uh, I'm so glad to hear that positive feedback. I just love uh, teaching and uh, sharing what I have learned or what I think I've learned. So I appreciate that. Any other questions? Okay, last chance. If you want a copy of the deck, feel free to email me, josh at tinderbox.marketing, and I will gladly uh, send you a copy of the deck and some of the other resources that I have uh, talked about today. Um, otherwise, you can check the chat, and I shared the two spreadsheets that I discussed. Um, so I really appreciated uh, the time that you gave me today. I'm so thankful. I know an hour is a lot to ask for and I appreciate it. I will hang out on Zoom and Facebook until everybody has logged off and then I will sign off. So feel free to stick around and ask questions if you have them. So if you're joining us on Facebook, still taking questions, still quite a few people logged in on the Zoom streaming. So if you have any questions, whether you're on Zoom or Facebook, feel free to ask away. You can ask me on Facebook uh, in the comment section. You can even send a, my, the page a, a message if you want. So feel free to ask questions and I'll just keep hanging out until it looks like everybody has logged out of the Zoom chat or Zoom webinar, sorry. Oh, somebody asked anything uh, you would suggest doing differently for nonprofits. Well, as I mentioned, I think nonprofits tend to fall into that trap of signing up for everything and then not being good at all of them. Uh, so the first suggestion I would have is um, evaluate what you have for your, your, your nonprofit. 
And um, this is a bonus tip. So say you find that you have like six social media sites. You have Facebook, you have LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, maybe you have a Pinterest and a YouTube, right? And maybe you're using some of them a lot and maybe some of them you're not using quite as much. So the first thing that I would recommend is figure out which ones you want to start using on a regular basis. And even if it's like one or two of them. Then what I recommend is post a message on the other platforms that you're not currently using it, but you'll be back soon. So like Twitter and Facebook allow you to pin a post to the top or highlight a post. So I encourage businesses to do that as a way to stay uh, relevant because what happens is, is if like a restaurant, for example, if I find their Twitter handle and it turns out they haven't tweeted since 2013, what's the first thing I think? Well, the first thing I think is that they're out of business, right? So if they have a pinned tweet that says, we're still in business, we're still using um, other social media platforms, we're just not using Twitter a whole lot right now, check back soon, then I know that at least they're open. The other thing I would recommend for nonprofits is to really be intentional about who's managing the social media platforms. Uh, two things happen here. One is you allow volunteers to manage it and then you get a volunteer experience. And what I mean by that is sometimes using volunteers doesn't get you the best engagement. And sometimes when you use volunteers, you have turnover, right? So volunteer decides they wanna run Facebook and they do it for a year and then they get burnt out or they move on or whatever. And then you get another volunteer. So you have a consistency issue. The other thing that you get with using volunteers is you run into the issue of somebody getting access as a, as a volunteer and that, or creating a platform. So I ran into this with a nonprofit where they had a Twitter account that was created for the nonprofit by a volunteer and it had been created years ago and none of the current leadership or the executive director even knew who the volunteer was and we were able to figure it out. None of them even knew who the volunteer was and we couldn't, and the volunteer wasn't responding to us. They couldn't get access to the Twitter account. We had to jump through all these hoops to try to figure out how to get access to Twitter and it was a nightmare. So uh, it's just for one, it's be, um, it's be intentional about, sorry about that. I was allowing uh, my wife to talk and I meant to, she raised her hand and I was just trying to respond to that. Um, so uh, it's be intentional about who you allow to have access. So keep track of that. Be intentional about who you allow to create accounts. And then, like I said, find out what accounts you have, what volunteers you have running what accounts, and just try to, a strategy will help make sure that everything's um, maintained on a consistent level. And then beyond that, it's just your nonprofits tend to be mission driven. So make sure that your content comes from that same place. Make sure that your content on social media comes from that mission driven uh, heart of the nonprofit and continue to do that. So great question. I appreciate that one. That one came from Facebook. So I'll keep hanging out. People are still logged into the uh, Zoom and I see people are still watching on Facebook. So continue to ask questions. Feel free. Uh, somebody said the first thing, you know what? It looks like an extra character got into that link. Uh, try that one. So I will put the two links in the Facebook Live as I'm sitting here. So those are available too. By the way, if you are checking out those uh, resources, those are Google spreadsheets. Don't make changes to those ones. You're gonna need to copy and uh, add them to your own Google Drive account. <laughs> You're welcome, Josh. I appreciate the question. Anything else? I hope you all appreciate the background. I recorded the last three workshops from my kitchen table and uh, my kids were able to not be around. So I didn't have the distraction, but they're all here and you might be hearing one right now, but I cleaned up and tidied up the background. So you can see I have, I put my guitar and a little wreath up. So I'm actually in a very interesting basement room. And if you could see around the rest of the room, you would see nothing but toys. So I hope that the background came out okay. Okay. 
Well, unless any other questions come in, I'm going to sign off. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time today. If you want some of the resources that I mentioned or all of the resources, please email me, josh at tinderbox.marketing and I'll make sure to email them out. Um, stay tuned to our Facebook page. And if you're on our newsletter, keep an eye out for that. We'll continue to do workshops every Friday, probably around this two o'clock frame. And if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear it. You can shoot me an email and suggest anything that you'd like me to talk about. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy.